You might be surprised, but one of the most influential companies when it comes to 3D technology that we have seen over the last couple of decades is not even a software development company, far from it. It is actually an animation studio that we all know. It is called Pixar, if you've heard of it. Pixar Animation Studios has released several powerful technologies and software, and they did that for free, to be used by the public and studios alike. In fact, some of their inventions you're using already, and you don't even know it. So in this video, I'll give you a list of some of the most important gifts that Pixar gave us, and I'm sure you will say at least once, I did not know that this was pioneered or created by Pixar. Before we continue, let me take a moment and tell you about one of the best 3D sculpting, texture painting, and retopology software to grab during this deal season. 3D Code is one of the only 3D software that still offers a perpetual license, along with subscription and rent-to-own option. You can start using it right now with a 30-day trial, then keep using it for free in the learning mode, which gives you full tools with limited export. So whether you are professional or hobbyist, 3D Code works perfectly alongside any major 3D software, offering strong sculpting, retopology, UV editing, and both PBR and hand-painted texturing. And since we are in the Black Friday season, 3D Code is offering a special discount of 100 euros of the permanent license, bringing the price down to just 279 euros during the sale. With the new 2025 release, 3D Code brings improvements to the UI and overall user experience, along with new tools like soft booleans, infinite depth, and the updated surface area tools that make it much easier to place repeating objects uniformly or randomly on mass surfaces. You also get the new node room for building PBR shaders, which can be baked to a material layer, in addition to better reality capture integration for cleaner photogrammetry results. Another useful addition is the updated Blender app link, which makes sending models between Blender and 3D Code much smoother. With this 2025 release, it now supports Blender version 4.3, 4.4, and 4.5. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description and start your trial of 3D Code today. I'm going to start with Universal Scene Description, often called USD, and it is Pixar's open source framework for 3D scene interchange and assembly. Well, in English, this means that USD is a universal language for 3D software. It lets different 3D software share complex scenes in a reliable way. Originally, it was built for Pixar's own pipeline, which was used in movies like Finding Dory and beyond. The new USD was open sourced in 2016 and has become an industry standard. You see, USD is used to describe and exchange 3D scenes that might include models, animations, lights, and shaders. Basically, all the data that makes a shot. Imagine multiple artists working on the same visual set, with features like layering, referencing, and non-destructive editing. This is where USD comes to play. It can store entire scenes, not just individual animated models. And big studios take advantage of it, because they use it to interchange assets between Maya, Houdini, Blender, etc. But it is also creeping into off-the-shelf tools, so even you as an individual 3D artist can benefit from it as more software support USD, including Blender itself. But if you are a 3D tool developer or technical director, USD should be definitely in your toolkit. And the good news is that Pixar's USD is completely open source. You can download it from GitHub and integrate it into your software if you want to do that. As you may know, RenderMan is Pixar's most popular 3D rendering software, the same engine that brings Pixar movies to life. And the great news, Pixar offers a free, a non-commercial version of RenderMan for 3D hobbyists, students, and researchers. But you can practice on the free version and then upgrade to the paid version for your commercial projects if you want to do that. As opposed to other technologies, RenderMan is not open source, but it has been free since 2015. If you've seen a Pixar movie, you've seen RenderMan's output. The free edition includes almost all the cutting edge features, I mean of the commercial version. For example, the latest RenderMan 27, the free edition, even includes a new hybrid CPU plus GPU rendering engine, or what is called RenderMan XPU, for super fast rendering. So it is obviously a professional grade rendering software at your hands for free. You can download the non-commercial RenderMan from Pixar's official website after creating a free account. And the good thing, Pixar provides integration plugins for Maya, Thunder, 
ودیني انكاتانا Another important tag in 3D is called OpenSubdiv, which is an open source library for subdivision surfaces released by Pixar. So if you've ever smoothed a 3D model to make it nice and round, subdivision algorithms were doing the work, and OpenSubdiv is Pixar's high-performance implementation of those algorithms. You see, it is all about turning core 3D models into smooth and detailed surfaces efficiently. It takes a mesh to dynamically generate the refined or smooth surface, even if the mesh is deformed, like in character animation. It runs on CPUs and GPUs, which means it can achieve interactive frame rates when previewing animated deformations. And this is the same tack that ensures Pixar's characters and environments appear perfectly smooth in motion. The good thing is that you are already using this tack, even if you don't know what it is, simply because major 3D software such as Max, Maya, Blender, and so on have integrated OpenSubdiv under the hood so you are indirectly using OpenSubdiv whenever you hit that smooth mesh button. And OpenSubdiv is completely open source. It lives on Pixar's GitHub and its own OpenSubdiv.org. You can download the source code and there is a documentation and even example code that you can start with. So if you want to make a 3D modeling tool or software, you can integrate it without any problems. And now we're going to talk about Alembic. While well, Alembic wasn't originally created by Pixar, it was co-developed by Sony Pictures, Imageworks, in addition to Industrial Light & Magic, but Pixar embraced it in their pipeline and helped the industry support it. For example, Pixar's USD includes built-in Alembic import and export plugins. You see, Alembic is used for transferring animated scene data between different 3D software. Think of a complex animated model, like a character or a VFX simulation, that you want to hand off from one application to another. Alembic stores that big geometry, in addition to animations and transformations, in a lightweight format. As you can imagine, its primary focus is efficiency, and to be specific, efficiently caching animated geometry, including meshes, curves, particles, etc. So that, for example, you can animate in Maya, export in Alembic, and render in Houdini, or vice versa, without loss of detail. It doesn't care for rigged or dependency graphs, just the final animated data, I mean the baked results, which makes it a reliable interchange format. Many 3D software come with Alembic support out of the box, so you might not even need a separate download, just an option to import and export Alembic. And since it is open source, studios often build custom Alembic pipeline tools as well. So as you can see, Alembic now is a standard for moving 3D data around and Pixar was a major player in making it this way. Pixar also pioneered something called Open Timeline I.O., which is an open source timeline interchange format. I would say this one is a bit different from the other 3D geometry tools above, because it is all about editing data, like the timeline of shots in movies, and it was developed to easily share editorial information, like cuts, transitions, track orders, and so on, between editing software and the rest of the production pipeline. For example, an editor might cut together a sequence of shots in the editing software. Open Time IO can represent the sequence, I mean the order of the shots, their timing, transitions, etc., in a format that other tools can read. And this I would say is super useful, especially for animation and VFX productions. The edit decision list can be ingested by animation or lighting tools to automatically pull the right shots or frames. So OpenTime I.O. supports tracks, cuts, transitions, markers, and more, but it doesn't carry the actual media, including the video files, images, and so on. Just the structure of the timeline. You see, OpenTime I.O. is aimed at studios, pipeline developers, and software developers, especially in the film and TV industry. As a single user, you're probably not gonna need it, but it is particularly useful for animation and VFX studios that need tight coordination between the editing room and the artist creating the content. So if you are an editor, you might not use directly OpenTime IO because it works behind the scenes, but if you are a pipeline TD or developer, you might use it to build tools that automatically update shot playlists, conform edits, track cut lengths, and so on. It is still kind of a new thing, but it is being actively adopted by companies such as Netflix and other production studios. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, 
and I will see you in the next one.